Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video will focus on the difference between leasing onto a carrier and leasing from a carrier because there is a big difference. Basically, we're talking about owner operators who lease onto a motor carrier versus drivers who lease purchase their trucks. Ready? Let's go. So the first thing I want to do is clarify the difference between leasing on and leasing from. There is a lot of confusion about this topic. So a lot of carriers have this program called the lease purchase program. Basically, you as the company driver can decide that you want to become an owner operator and own your own truck. What do you do? You go to your company and they give you one of their trucks and you are paying it off month to month until you pay it off and then the truck is yours. Now, someone who is leasing onto a carrier is completely different. This is an owner operator who already has their own truck and trailer possibly, but doesn't have authority. So what do they do? They lease their equipment to a carrier. So basically they own their equipment and they operate it under the carrier, therefore owner operator. Now onto the fun stuff, the truth. So the first big difference between someone who is leasing onto a carrier and someone who's participating in a lease purchase program is the degree of freedom. I recently wrote a small LinkedIn post about this idea of diamond cages. They're beautiful, they may be comfortable, but you know what? A cage is still a cage. So I like to compare these lease purchase programs to those diamond cages. They look good from afar, they shine like the sun, but you know what? Once you're in it, you're stuck. So what does that mean? That means the carrier will not allow you to leave unless you either pay off your truck fully or decide to leave your truck behind. Now, does that mean that this carrier is being shady? No, absolutely not. This is actually, from a business perspective, very sound, because think about it. As long as you are still paying off that truck, the truck actually belongs to the carrier, which means that if you decide to leave, you can't take that truck with you unless you pay it off fully first. But there is a shady practice that a lot of carriers are engaged in. Towards the end of your lease, when you're about to finally pay off that truck, the carrier all of a sudden starts telling you that the freight market turned. There are no loads out there. Oh, Danny, I know that the freight market is very bad and we can't find you loads, but uh, your truck pays is due. Oh, you can't pay because we didn't get you loads. Damn, how should I say this? Uh, if we don't get payment on your truck, you lose the truck. Yeah, unfortunately this does happen and there are so many cases of a driver with a dream walking away empty-handed after participating in a lease purchase program. Now, as a comparison, an owner operator who leases onto a carrier doesn't have that problem because guess what? The truck is theirs, so if they decide to leave, they are taking that truck with them. Now, this whole thing leads me to the number two difference between a lease on and lease from, the carrier's motivation. So the best way to understand the difference between lease on versus lease from is to understand it from a carrier's perspective. What does the carrier get out of it? Well, the first thing is very obvious. Manpower. The more drivers in the company, the more the carrier makes. And this applies both to the lease purchase driver as well as the owner operator who leases onto a motor carrier. But now let's look at the differences. When you're an owner operator and you have your own equipment and you decide to lease onto a carrier, the carrier gains a driver and a truck. If you decide to leave the carrier, the carrier loses a driver and a truck. That's it. So what are carriers motivated to do? When you lease onto a carrier, they are motivated to find you the best paying load so that you stay with them because they know that you have the option of leaving at any time together with your equipment and finding another carrier who will be willing to pay you what you deserve. Now let's look at the lease purchase driver. Let's say you decide to leave and you're leasing a truck from the carrier, but you decide I've had enough, the loads are paying very bad. Great, you can do that, but you don't get the truck. Now, on the other hand, let's say that you're one of those people who is almost done with their lease payments and you decide, you know what, I'm going to stick it out because I really wanna have my own truck. So what is the carrier motivated to do? Keep you, of course, at any cost because the carrier fully understands that once you pay off that truck, 
you can leave with that equipment and guess what? The carrier will be down one truck and one driver. So how do they keep you? Well, by the end of your lease, all of a sudden, all loads disappear. Oops, no loads. Oops, you're not getting enough money to cover your expenses. Oops, you're late on payments. Oops, you can no longer afford this truck. Whoops, you are back to being a company driver. Is it shady? Yeah, absolutely it's shady. That's just bad business in my opinion. But now let's go to the number three difference. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and look at some numbers. Okay, so now my favorite part, the board. All right, so let's look at some real numbers. So I'm going to use our numbers from an owner operated truck for last month, the month of October. That truck brought in $44,110 gross income and ran 12,353 miles just about. Now these miles were not just related to loads like transit time, deadhead, et cetera, et cetera. But for the purpose of this video, we will say they are. So now let's go through what I'm going to do. So here we have the company driver earning 70 cents per mile. Here we have the lease purchase driver earning $1.20 per mile. Now this seems to be about average in terms of payments according to what I researched on the job board. Now finally we have the lease on owner operator with his own truck and his own trailer possibly that's earning 75% of gross. And we will use these numbers to calculate what the difference in net is among these three drivers. So for the company driver earning 70 cents per mile and driving this amount of miles, this driver would earn $8,647.10. Now a lease purchase operator or lease purchase driver would earn $1.20 per mile on these miles. So he would be earning $14,823.60. Yep, big difference, but don't get too excited yet. Now, as a comparison, the leased on owner operator with his own truck that's leased on to the carrier and who's earning 75% of the gross income would be earning $33,082.50. Now let's go on to the expenses. For the company driver, the only expense really that is deducted from their net income is the withholdings. So here the driver's withholdings, if we're considering that this is the state of California, just for this example, it's $2,845.49. Now, of course, a lease purchase driver and the owner operator leased on do not get tax withholdings because they are independent contractors. Now the fun part. As a company driver, you're not responsible for paying for fuel, you're not responsible for paying for insurance. You're not responsible for the maintenance, the permits and the truck payments. But as a lease purchase driver or a leased on owner operator, you are responsible for those payments. So for last month, the fuel cost was $8,850.66. Now insurance. The real cost of insurance, liability, cargo was $1,079.60. Now for the maintenance, we will say for the purpose of this video that this is a carrier that takes a maintenance escrow up to $2,000 and they charge you $800 a month. If they pay you weekly, that means $200 a week. So here the maintenance escrow is $800 per month, right? Now also this carrier, let's say, charges you $120 per month for all the permits, the IFTA, the permits for the states and all of those things. So $120 per month is for permits. Now as a lease purchase driver, you have truck payments. So let's say this is a very, very frustrating carrier who charges you $2,000 per month to lease your truck. Now, as a leased on owner operator, you might have truck payments of your own as well that are not to the carrier. They're the truck that you have that you own or you might not. So for the purpose of this video, for now, we're going to say that no, you don't owe anything on the truck. You already bought it. It's yours. So now let's calculate the net income. So the company driver earning 70 cents per mile has the gross income right here minus all the tax withholdings. So this person earns 5,000. $801.61. 
This is after taxes. This is what the company driver walks away with at the end of the month. Now let's look at the lease purchase driver who made significantly more in gross income than the company driver, but also has all of these expenses that he either paid out of pocket or the company fronted the cost and then deducted it from his paycheck. So the total net income is $1,973.34. Yikes. Now for comparison, let's look at the owner operator that's leased on. Now, of course he made a ton more money than both of these guys because he's getting 75% of the gross of the load. And he has very similar expenses to the lease purchase driver minus the truck payments. We don't know, does he have truck payments? Does he not have truck payments? We don't know, but we'll say that he doesn't. So with these numbers right here, he would be making 22,200 $32.24. So that's quite a difference right here. So I know the numbers are a little bit shocking and they are based on true miles. They are based on true gross income from last month from one owner operated truck in our company. However, some of these numbers are estimates. The fuel is an actual expense from last month. So is the insurance, the maintenance, the permits, and the truck payments are estimates based on averages. So are they lying to you when they're saying you're going to make more? Well, no, your gross is more. I mean, look at this. You're making so much more money. What they're lying about is withholding from you how much it actually costs to run your own business. And these carriers conveniently forget to mention what your net income will be as a lease purchase driver versus a company driver. Now I know these numbers that we just looked at are shocking, but remember it all depends on how much you actually get paid, what you have to pay and how long you have to pay it. Do we do lease purchase programs in our company? Absolutely not because we want our drivers to dream big. We want you to save your money, build your credit score, get that truck and become an owner operator. You can lease on at first, but then get your authority as well. Why am I so passionate about the subject? Because I hate the idea of a diamond cage that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. A diamond cage is comfortable. It looks great. It smells good, but you know what? It's a cage. It's not freedom. So we always encourage all of our drivers who want to become owner operators, to actually dream big and do it. Just do it. Don't do lease purchase programs. Just get your own equipment, become your own boss. Now in the near future, I will actually be making another video showing the differences between an owner operator with their own authority and an owner operator that is leased on to a carrier and what the differences in income are. So stay tuned for that. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.